Right, 24 hours is not a long time, I fellow Lion Earthers, but that doesn't mean I can't still cram in lots of overscoping. Okay, the TV is back, perfect. I was thinking we could somehow take this retro 1D world and slap it on there. We can set up a 2D camera and draw everything it can see to a render texture. This is then seen by another, this time 3D camera, which produces the final output. What's excellent about this approach is that we don't even have to render to a plane. How about a cube? A sphere? A capsule? Or in our case, a deliciously beautiful TV screen. You know what's more interesting to watch than this TV though? Today's sponsor, Mental Checkpoint. Mental Checkpoint is a fellow YouTuber making some of the best game design videos out there. As an indie game developer myself looking to release my horse taming deluxe simulator, his video on marketing a game to success is incredibly useful. I am sure we are all guilty of thinking that we are that one in a million that doesn't need to worry about any marketing because we have made the next Minecraft that's just going to sell itself. But he pulls from his wealth of experience to not just tell you how to be better than this, but by taking you on his journey with him into the very successful and accomplished game developer he is today, it makes you feel like that could be you too. For some of the best animations and editing I've ever seen, be sure to check him out at the link below. And... Public. Shit! One pretty important question remains though. How do you even make a 1D game? You can quite literally do only two things. Move left, and you guessed it, move diagonal. That's great, but even with only two directions to go in, we already have our first problem. How do we stop the player leaving the view of the camera? Lay block is two thingies wide. Center of block from the edge is one thingy wide. The camera is five thingies wide. So, right, block no move more than four thingies along or it go over. I'm a genius. Unfortunately, that equation doesn't include the fact that this feels like a pile of sh**. That's okay, I'll just go and throw all of that in the bin. What we need is a portal system. If we can open a portal from one side and teleport just the part of the player that is over the line to the other side, we're in business. Simply duplicating the player and spacing them out is all it takes. But eventually, you will run out. So to fix this, we could just add 10,000 different players and hope they never run out by holding down. But the smarter thing to do is, once one of the outer players goes too far, teleport it to the other side. It's safe to do this here because it's out of view of the camera anyway, so you can't tell. Shame the gameplay is still pretty boring though, so can we fix that now, please? Yes? The basic idea will be all about length. Since that's literally all we have to work with. The length of the player will be shrinking constantly, and if you get too small, then it's game over. Clicking that start over button isn't so easy though, because although normally I could just make it a button and you click it and that's it, because that's how buttons work, that button isn't actually here. It's over there. We have to emulate the screen with an actual mouse in this box, and then translate that position into a position for the TV cursor. Then we can shoot a ray from the mouse cursor to detect our custom TV buttons. That was a huge waste of three hours, but at least we can now go back to the game. We need a way for the player to grow back some of their lost sides. What makes things get longer? That's right, green squares. This super simple feature worked first time, <laughs> but introduced a little problem. Why has the wrapping broken? It's because only the player that is touching the pickup actually grows. We can fix this by instead when a player touches a grow it just tells it to grow. We put a little event in between which then tells all three players to grow instead. My favourite thing about this game is that it makes you feel like you're playing Skyrim. In that it's a complete atrocious buggy mess. You see, once you reach a certain size, you can just sit in the middle and infinite one-up trick yourself away to unlimited points by collecting all the new power-ups. When small, you need to be grown by everything possible as it's crucial to survive, but obviously this is overkill when you're big. I figured there must be somewhere in between those values where as you get bigger, I can make growers grow you by less and less. To mathematically determine the precise optimum moment to change the effectiveness, I just picked the number one because it's easier and uh, you, it's my game, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Although this then broke the game by making it too easy, now holding left is a good strategy as any other. I got the solution. Instead of moving the player with a velocity system, maybe we can remove the player, throw him in the bin, drop kick it to the moon, set the moon on fire, launch it into the sun, flash freeze the sun, flick it and oh damn it, we broke it. I guess we're gonna have to make another game instead. What a shame. Tennis hours left because I took a break because I do, in fact, have a life. The idea is simple, five blocks in the middle you can toggle on or off. With 32 possible positions matching the number of brain cells I have left from the absolute stress of this challenge. Some lovely green balls fly in from the left and you have to guide them through this gauntlet of blocks to the other side to gain points. It's a little more complicated than this but it's a secret for now because I don't know if I'll have time to implement it, so more about that later. Starting small I got the blocks spawning in the correct positions, then I moved on to making them toggle or blah blah to toggle to you can turn them on and off. Grey means it's open and black means it's closed. You can toggle them with 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 on the keyboard, which is actually quite annoying because of this lovely little gap on my keyboard and the fact I had to do it one handed so I could film. But trust me, it's actually really fun already. Now we add the balls, then get the collision working and the idea is sort of alive. So about that secret, if you've been screaming, uh, blank, you don't have to do anything, just turn off all the blocks and it's a free win, you suck. <laughs> First of all, I'm deeply offended you think I could have any ideas that are so deeply flawed like that. Second of all, 
Shut up, you're completely right. <laughs> but this time, I have a secret weapon. Red balls have all the opposite properties to the green ones. They come in from the right, and you want to send them back to the right. If the reds make it to the other side, you lose a point, not gain one. Just these very simple mechanics are already quite a mind-bending little puzzle game, and I actually sort of love it. I polished up the menu with some tweened animations to allow you to pick which minigame you want to play now that there's two of them, or go to sleep, because let's face it, complete darkness is probably more fun than both of these games combined. I realised that using the 3D game engine to make a 2D representation of a 1D game admittedly feels a little bit like using a supercomputer to solve first grade maths homework, but at least I'd have to do something even more insane and awful like using Godot. Like